This is an image of the Andromeda galaxy that I took between October and November 2024. It's not the best. The stars are elongated because my guiding is off and there's a lot of noise and other issues. But I've been obsessed with photographing it for three years now. I learned how to find it in the night sky, but I was never quite sure what I was seeing. Is that a galaxy? Is it a star? I spent too many years wondering and I needed to do something about it. So one night in July 2021, I thought, what the heck, I'll get a telescope. I remember when I heard that you could see the Andromeda galaxy with the naked eye. The first time I heard that, I remember thinking, geez, I gotta see this. This is a whole galaxy. You can just see anytime you want. It's so accessible. I use the Andromeda galaxy to get focus. If I'm trying out new equipment like I did when I got this scope, I use the Andromeda galaxy because it's just an easy, fun target. It's a really fun target to go for because it's so big and it's just around a lot. It's around about half of the year. You can shoot the Andromeda Galaxy for like six months. I've, shot, I've got shots of the Andromeda Galaxy in August all the way till uh, the end of January is probably it for me. But you can get it for like six months. Shut up, God, stupid crows. The first telescope I bought was a Telemu. It's a 70 millimeter refractor that cost about a hundred bucks. I felt safe because it was only a hundred dollars and my son and I could go check it out. I managed to get a picture of Jupiter through the Telemu with my phone. I still can't believe that I got this. The Telemu, um, it doesn't even have a name. Actually, I put this plate, an SV Boney plate on the bottom of it so I could use it with a real mount. It's actually not a good telescope. It's not that bad. It has a really cheap focuser made out of plastic and some metal. I wasn't satisfied with my picture of Jupiter and I still wanted to get a good look at the Andromeda Galaxy. Originally thought to be a nebula in our own Milky Way, it was discovered to be a galaxy outside our own. In the 1920s, an astronomer named Edwin Hubble discovered a Cepheid variable in the Andromeda Nebula that revealed the distance of the Andromeda Nebula and proved that it was too far away to be in our own galaxy, making it its own galaxy and revealing how vast our universe really is. The galaxy can be found on the right side of Andromeda's waist. In about two billion years, Andromeda will collide with the Milky Way. Here's my first picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. I took it with the Nexstar 127, which I bought two weeks later. It was my first big purchase for astronomy, and I got it because I became obsessed with seeing Andromeda. I hovered the mouse over the confirm order button for nearly an hour. I was so nervous, but I read that it's important to keep astronomy fun, and you only get that with good equipment. I shot the image with a dedicated astronomy camera, the ASI 120MC by ZWO. At the time, I didn't know that it's best for planetary, not galaxies. Uh, the 120, actually this is the 224MC. It looks just like the 120 though. I wouldn't be able to tell them apart unless you showed me the back says 224 but it's the same type of camera that the 120 is it's slightly better what i didn't know was that the scope and the camera were both best for planetary imaging so i bought a scope the ct80 for deep space imaging and i bought a nice mount the skywatcher eqm 35 
This is actually my favorite mount. It's very lightweight. It's great for traveling. I've taken it on many trips. Okay, so this is the EQM35. I remember buying this and thinking, I am nuts. You go from this and a month later buying that. I had no idea I was going to end up doing this, but this mount, I still use this baby. Now, if you're not used to using a nice mount, you won't realize that they come with a polar scope built into them. And the whole idea is that when you set an equatorial mount up, you want it to counteract the rotation of the earth so that your scope will follow any of the objects that you're imaging and make them look like they're standing still. So you'll get a good image of them for a long period of time or a bunch of little images. And you won't have to keep finding them over and over again. It follows them. So in order to get it to do that, you have to polar align it. And that's why they come with a scope built right in. The front of the scope is up here inside and the piece that the eyepiece is right here built in. Then you find Polaris, align it, and you are all set up to. Okay, so it turns out that Polaris or the North Star isn't located over True North. It actually circles very close around True North. And in order to find that, you need to have um, an app. And its location is where you should find it in your scope. So you would line it up with its slightly southwest. So you would line up Polaris in your scope slightly southwest of True North. A lot of the newer mounts, the lightweight ones, you use for automated polar alignment. This mount comes with a polar scope. You can manually polar align this mount. A lot of the new mounts that are coming out that are really trendy don't come with a polar scope in them. And so if you don't have electronic devices hooked up all, to all of your gear, you're not going to be able to polar align. So that's one of the reasons why I like this mount because it, it, you can do both electronic and you can manually polar align. I use the EQM35, the ASI120 camera, and the Orion CT80 to capture the core of Andromeda, and I got closer to seeing the galaxy. My first stacked images were of 10 second exposures. I was closer, but I wasn't satisfied. So after Halloween, I bought a good deep space camera, the Canon 5D Mark II, and I finally managed to get an exposure of the whole galaxy. I've always hated winter, but in order to get a good image, I needed to be out in the cold. All of my attempts from here on were going to be in zero degree temperatures. It gets really cold when it's really clear out in the winter, but that's the best time to shoot because the sky is really, really clear of moisture. A lot of the moisture is on the ground in snow form. I would click every 30 seconds and take another exposure. And I would hold the shutter open for 30 seconds. And go one, two, three, four. That's how I took my first pictures of Andromeda. Finally, I bought a better scope and a flattener. And the next month, I captured this image. I was so proud of this. The night I took this image, I was quarantined from work with COVID and still went outside in the cold for hours. It would turn out to be one of my worst images of the Andromeda Galaxy, but I didn't know that I would get much better and continue to improve, and I'm still learning. This would be the first of many improvements, and after Andromeda, I found many more incredible things in the night sky that made me a better astronomer.
The sun is just another star in the night sky. It's just too bright that's in the dark where you can see where you truly are in the middle of space.